Previously on the Rod Peterson Show. Nose rod and uh, protect the front of the net and locked a lot of pucks. And on occasion, uh, you know, sometimes you had to be a policeman out there. Okay, I apologize for that. Tough guy. Who wouldn't want to be known as a tough guy? Um, Kyle McIntyre from the 80s. So anyways, I, I didn't mean to catch you off guard. But it looks like... <laughs> From all accounts, it's been a tremendous start to the regular season for the SJ. Uh, can you yeah, confirm yeah, or deny? Excellent. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, our attendance this weekend, we averaged about 995 fans right across uh, our 12 venues. Uh, every team uh, had an opportunity to host a home game. I think there is one team that has uh, no blemishes on the record. That's Melfort. And there's only one team, Notre Dame, that doesn't have a point after the weekend. So hockey is back in Saskatchewan. Our fans are coming out and supporting the SJHL. And... And again, it looks like it's going to be a battle right to the bitter end, Rod. Uh, right now, 12 out of 12 teams have an opportunity to win the Cantera Seeds Cup. Well, Pan, uh, parody is thy name of the game. And uh, listen, in the pro leagues, you can go through salary caps, obviously, and various restrictions. But in a junior A league, it would be a lot harder to do. Um, but you're telling me there's a lot of parody. Is that locker design? I don't know if it's design. Uh, you know, it might be uh, recruiting. It might be uh, that all the coaches are are fairly familiar with one another's game plans. I'm not sure what it is, but it makes some great hockey to watch for sure. Get ready for the Rod Peterson Show. I've had enough of Taylor Swift. Please tell me you have too. As a Chiefs guy, I'm here for it, Rod, but I do have 5% of it is just worried that the most, the biggest star on the planet, the most powerful woman in the world, actually has her eyes on the real prize, and that's Patrick Mahomes, and she's infiltrating the Chiefs from the inside through Kelsey. This is the Rod Peterson Show. Yeah, it is. Happy Wednesday, everybody, and welcome aboard. Choo Choo, the RP show, leaving the station. Please do not adjust your sets nor your radios. We're live on the Game Plus Television Network, WQE Radio, down there in Atlanta, Georgia. Shout out Ryan O'Radio. You were sounding fantastic this morning, Rhino. I checked in on that one. Uh, obviously, we're in a podcast form and YouTube Live. I am in the South Florida studio. Darren Moose DuPont is in the NHL's Bermuda Triangle and coming up on today's show. A couple of football guys as we welcome in the Moose. I'm excited to say on this week's CFL Players Association Players Spotlight, it is Edmonton Elks defensive lineman Jake Serezna. I was at the game when he did a somersault after sacking the quarterback and took out the referee. I was there. <laughs> See, Darren, how that phrase keeps coming up? I was there. It'll be the that's topic of my memoir. So I want to ask him about that. And uh, that's in hour one. And in hour two, John Ryan of the Super Bowl champion Seattle Seahawks. CFL veteran, NFL veteran Johnny Ryan's going to be checking in with us. They had their 10-year reunion of the Super Bowl winning Seahawks just this past weekend. He was there, of course, and I'm looking forward to talking to JR about that. So as we get ready to jump down the sports lane, what's on your mind today? What do you got going on? Well, you know, just as we sit here three weeks into the season, I know we're going to get to some NFL stuff, but chatting about that. But I'm, I'm starting to catch the hockey bug a little bit. Um, <laughs> You know, it, it's fun to watch highlights on Sports Center. It's fun to talk about training camp. And it feels like it took until this week. You asked earlier, do I care about preseason and rookie tournaments? I feel like it took till this week for me to start being, oh, feels like hockey's here again because I think I was out Why last was night. that? I don't yep. know. Continue. You know, I, I, well, I, no, I was out last night and it got cold and the nip was in the air, you know, and you saw when I was driving around, players were – at the cooperators or at the local rink, unloading their hockey gear. It's starting. It's here. So uh, it, this is kind of a really fun, fun season for me. Yeah, well, I will say this disclaimer for our audience. 
I had the hockey bug all summer, and as a child, I used to tape games on the VCR during the Stanley Cup playoffs to watch on the hot summer days. That's how much I missed it then, and that's how much I miss it now. So I get where you're coming from. Believe me, I do, but uh, I've had it, the buzz for a while. Now, can you hit the quick six show horn, please, Tuna? And we'll get down to business. And quit, Mickey Melson. We open with baseball. The Toronto Blue Jays did not inch closer to securing a playoff berth after a 2-0 loss to the Yankees on Tuesday night. With both teams tied in the ninth, Austin Wells had a two-run homer to give New York the edge. Toronto's won 7-10, though, and they're still one and a half up on Houston for the American League second wildcard spot. The Brewers, though, clinched the NL Central title for the third time in six seasons despite a 4-1 loss to the Cardinals. That was thanks to a come-from-behind win by the Atlanta Braves. Again, shout-out Peach City. Hello, WQEE. Milwaukee clinched its second division crown in three seasons when the Cubs dropped the 7-6 decision to Atlanta. Moving on to point two, former San Francisco 49ers quarterback Colin Kaepernick wrote a letter to New York Jets general manager Joe Douglas asking the team to consider signing him to the practice squad. The letter dated September 21st was released on social media by rapper J. Cole Tuesday. Kaepernick last played in the NFL with the 49ers in 2017 that of course after he began kneeling on the sideline of games during the national anthem to protest social injustice and police brutality so this is where we're at now in 2023 let's take a minute and just mark down the date rapper j cole breaking the news that colin kaepernick wrote that? a letter to the jets yeah it stopped the world i want to get off nothing makes sense it almost feels like covid times uh, and I guess since it's been almost a week since he wrote the letter and he's still not in New York, it was a polite thanks, but no thanks. Your thoughts on this, Moose? Yeah. <clears throat> on the one hand, I, I sympathize with Colin Kaepernick a little bit because we only have one life and he wants to play football and he's just yearning for that and he doesn't have closure on the football life. But, you know, he's standing up for great causes, social injustice, and he's making sure that the next generation is going to have a better path and more opportunities than he did. Unfortunately, he's too much of a distraction um, to bring in to the National Football League right now. And the other side of it is he hasn't played in six or seven years, and he's 35 years old. So he probably, even the kneeling and the distractions aside, probably isn't an option uh, for teams in the National Football League to take seriously right now. Yeah, I don't know Kaepernick. I know guys that know him. They seem to speak somewhat highly of him. They don't hate him. But you know what he should have done? He should have come to the CFL. But he clearly thought he was too good for the CFL. So that tells me a lot about him. Shoot, Johnny Manziel, like the biggest jerk maybe ever. He came to the CFL. He didn't have a problem with it. But Cap didn't. And uh, you should have, Cap. So hope it was worth it. We said in our thumbnail that we were going to do the NFL power rankings. And I'm only going to ask you for your top six. But they came out from the, the USA Today today. And I'm interested to read them to you. I'm not sure that I agree. And that's what's fun about power rankings. They literally don't mean anything. But I know people get all worked up about them and love to talk about it. So I get that. Number one, they got the San Francisco 49ers, the best team in the NFL, entering week four. Number two, the Philadelphia Eagles. Number three, the Miami Dolphins. Number four, the Kansas City Chiefs. And number five, the Buffalo Bills, which, by the way, I've been talking to Joe Lazito on Long Island, huge Bills fan, and he says this is Canada's game of the week. Sunday, Dolphins at the Bills. Bills are favored by three. I'm, I'm now anointed into, I guess, the uh, Fins Up Army. I got to speak for the Dolphins, who... While they are the most exciting team, and yes, Troy Aikman talked about their spread, are their motion offense being similar to the Canadian Football League? He's got everybody all horny in Canada that the CFL was mentioned on national television in the States. They're not a physical team. They're not a brute force team. And from what I understand this week, the Bills are going to brutalize, or at least try to brutalize, the Miami Dolphins and bring them down to earth. So we'll see. That is the game of the week, the Dolphins and the Bills. Let me say it again. San Fran 1, Philly 2, Miami 3, Kansas City 4, Buffalo 5, and the Dallas Cowboys have tumbled all the way down to we can't even find them. What are your power rankings, Moose? We're pretty close. Um, 
Different order, but we have four of the top five the same. I have Buffalo in sixth right now. Mm. Um, I mean, look at their games, 37-3, 38-10. They got the number two defense in the NFL. Um, I have your Cowboys in fifth. I still do, despite the lost Arizona. I, st- I had them you know, as maybe the top team in the National Football League a couple weeks into the season. And one loss isn't going to change that, but Dak's got to be cleaner, and the injuries are starting to be a problem. Um, number four, I have Philadelphia. Um, nobody runs the ball like they do. 200 yards in their la- each of their last two games. And they're first against the run. They, make a, they create a ton of turnovers. Three, I have Kansas City. Um, you know, you wonder who these guys are on offense, but they keep making plays, and you keep worrying about them scoring. Two, I have San Francisco at two. Ooh. They put up 30 points in week one against a really good San Fran- uh, Pittsburgh defense, but they're balanced. Third on offense, number three on defense. They're really balanced. And I've got your Dolphins, number one. I got the Dolphins as the best team. Look at this. First in yards, first in points, first in rushing, first in passing. Miami Dolphins. They're doing this undefeated with a defense that's ranking in the bottom third of the, of the, of the league. They got a coach that's creative yes. and everybody likes. And when their defense starts playing well, they're going to be really tough. And they're all those numbers, first, 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 they're doing all that without Jalen Waddle too. So this team's only going to continue to get better. And I don't think he's playing this week as he comes back from a concussion. But uh, they're exciting to watch. I told you before we went on the air today that it's all Dolphins all the time, which I get on the radio, but I had to turn it off. And I'm actually quite satisfied and happy that I did. I think I'm going with Joe Lazito that the Bills bring the Dolphins back to earth this week. Offense sells tickets. Defense wins championships. There's a reason these sayings have made the rounds for so long, Moose. You know? So anyways, that's all I care to talk about with the power rankings. Holy smokes. Holy Mackinac! Do we have a lot to get to here in the quick six show topics in the warm-up? In the National Hockey League, on Tuesday night, the Buffalo Sabres beat Boston 4-1. The Rangers doubled up on the Islanders 4-2. That one was on television, and I watched it. Detroit shaded Pittsburgh 4-3. Carolina smoked Tampa Bay like a cheap cigar. 5-2. St. Louis got past Columbus, 3-2. Dallas whipped Minnesota, 6-1. And Anaheim doubled San Jose, 4-2. We'll talk about tonight's games in the NHL later on in the warm-up. We have time for sure an hour, too. But I do have another any. I have an actual NHL story here. Place line, Toronto. Ryan Reeves wasn't going to sign just anywhere. Max Domi, meanwhile, dreamt of pulling on the blue and white jersey since childhood. And Totter Bertuzzi jumped at the chance to play for another original six franchise. The Toronto Maple Leafs remade a chunk of their forward group during a dramatic offseason of change. The big names, including stars Austin Matthews, Mitch Marner, Wee Willie Nylander, and John Tavares, remain in place after the organization finally broke through last spring and advanced in the playoffs for the first time since 2004. That's from a Canadian press story on the Toronto Maple Leafs I was reading today. Uh, I, I just, I got to think, I would think that you are not riddled with anxiety like a lot of fans of their NHL teams, because if you're a Leafs fan, you know you're good. It's like, can we just get to the regular season already? I mean, what do the Leafs have to figure out in the preseason? What, are they, what do you think? What are they saying up there? Yeah, not a lot. <clears throat> They're trying to figure out a little bit of how these line pairings play out, right? Where does Domi fit in? Who's he going to play with? Is Bertuzzi going to be the fit on that top line? You know, who's going to, the fourth line. It's a little bit of that stuff. Um, but it's, it's one or two spots. It's the kind of the fourth line, who's going to be on that, that wing and it looks like Noah Gregor has an opportunity. And then defense. What are the pair, you know, the, the bottom four defensemen? What does that look like? So it's very, very little to look at. I'm ready for the regular season and to get this thing moving to see what this team actually is going to look like. Yeah, not every team is as set as the Leafs or the Jets. There's a lot, or the Oilers. There's a lot of questions in Calgary and obviously a lot of questions in Vancouver, I think, and Montreal, too. And every Canadian team is playing tonight, I believe. We'll have more to talk about tomorrow. But it's interesting you talk about the line combinations. 
course, we're following the preseason. You can follow it, but don't put any credence into this. I remember last fall. I was in Calgary last fall for the start of the NHL season, if you remember. And the Flames, help me out, Calgary. Did they not go 0-8 on a homestand to start the year? And I'm sitting there following what all the media is saying. And I'm at the games. I'm watching eyeball tests. Everybody's going on about the line combos. Well, by the second period, they all changed. <laughs> like, it's not yeah. that big a deal. You know, that was, and then, oh, they're looking for the right chemistry. They never found the right chemistry all year. And then after that sucky homestand for the Flames, they went on a uh, trip through New York. Islanders, Rangers, Devils, lost them all. And they were saying, this team needs to get out on the road. That's what it, They're sick of playing at home. They need to get out on the road. They went out and got their ass kicked on the road in every game. I'm like, okay, what is it now? Yeah, now what? Uh-oh. <clears throat> How about that? Oh. Good, thing we're, good thing we're up against the break. Fire him back in. We will in a minute. Um, but yeah, that, that is funny, the line combos and everything else. So we'll follow the NHL preseason. Uh, we're going to get to that in a little bit more. Um, let's break a little bit early then. We'll go to break. Hang on. And then we'll come back. Sorry. Right? You're back? Most, there you go. I'm sorry. What was the last yeah. thing you heard me say? Yeah, um, you were saying they go out on the road and they lose all the games and it's like, now what? Right? <laughs> yeah. So I, I enjoy watching what the media says, trip all over themselves in all these NHL markets, defending the teams as much as I enjoy watching the games themselves. Uh, not that I have all the answers, but at that time of the season, the Flames didn't have the answers either. So to watch the media try and <laughs> figure out what was wrong was hilarious. Yeah, I know. Uh, and they never did figure it out, and the coach and GM got fired. So, by the way, our hockey coverage is brought to you in part by Common Crown Brewing Company. Head down to the Tap Room in Calgary, 28th Street Northeast, Thursday through Saturday, noon to 8 p.m. Take some friends down there and sample the beer yourselves. They have a huge cooler there full of their beer. Check them out ahead of time if you wish at Common Crown Brewing Company. Uh, their website is commoncrown.ca. They bring you our hockey coverage and our sports updates every day. When we do come back, uh, Moose was calling for a break. We'll do that. Canada's Game of the Week in the CFL. I want to get the audience's uh, take on that via the daily poll for Key Auto Group. Kerry Underwood fallout. I guess we won a big soccer game last night. When I say me, uh, I'm referring to Canada. Uh, we have a lot to get to. And Jake Ceresna and John Ryan on the way, too. We are live on the Game Plus Television Network, WQEE Radio. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube Live. We're all capable of doing more. More speed, more reps, more commitment to getting every detail perfect. And that's why it's important we never miss a donation appointment. Blood and plasma donors are needed every day in Canada to support thousands of patients that rely on Canada's lifeline. We're asking you to join the Hockey Gives Blood Partners for Life team. Join today by downloading the Give Blood app or book online at blood.ca slash HGB. landscape continues to change and teams and facilities are under more pressure to provide online and in-venue entertainment. They need the right team to deliver their product. Look no further than IKS Live. We provide service across North America and produce the best fan experience across all platforms. Did you know that you can help save a life? And you can start right now. 
Stem cells from male donors increase chances of positive outcomes for patients, yet they only make up 40% of our registry. Today, there are hundreds of people in Canada searching for their life-saving match. You can be a patient's best hope. Be a hero by registering with Canadian Blood Services Stem Cell Registry now. Here's how your business can be a part of Canada's fastest growing sports talk show. All you have to do is contact us and we will tell you all about the dynamic and exciting marketing opportunities we have utilizing a fully integrated 360 degree multi-platform. Imagine your business seen and heard across Canada on Game Plus TV and around the world on the Rod Peterson Digital Network. You will use one of the most overused expressions in sports. You gotta be kidding me. Get your business involved. Contact the Rod Peterson Show today. Hey, collectors, register for the premier sports card convention where collectors, enthusiasts, and sports lovers unite to celebrate the beauty and value of their treasured items taking place in Red Deer, Alberta in the Parkland Pavilion September 29th, 30th, and October 1st. Get your tickets and more information at premiersportscardcon.ca. I'm in the South Florida studio. Moose is in the NHL's Bermuda Triangle. And I will say this, uh, Moose, it was a lot of fun having Virgil on the other day from Homestead Collectibles and Red Deer. He's putting on that convention. I will, this would not be a surprise to anybody. If I was the, in Calgary, in Alberta, I would be at that sports card convention, no doubt. I think it would be so much fun. Um, I hope that they do have some sports people there, some sports celebrities at an autograph table, that sort of thing. Like, you saw my photos a couple of weeks ago from the Matthew Kachuk autograph signing from Hollywood Collectibles here in Hollywood, Florida. I was there for that. Coming up in a couple of weeks, they got Raheem Mostert from the Dolphins, the starting tailback. He's going to be at Hollywood Collectibles signing autographs. That kind of stuff is just fun, man. It's fun. Have you been to a convention like that, sports card convention? I haven't. I haven't been able to make one, and I'd like to because I think they would be so cool. And... You know, it's so, I don't know. I'd like to get back into collecting cards and doing things like that because it, it seems like so much fun. And even just going around there and seeing all the history of the games and stuff and sports, it's, it's pretty neat. And it's growing like crazy. Well, I hope that they have some, oh, shoot, I just kicked the camera. My bad. <laughs> Sorry. My foot was hooked around the camera. Anyways, uh, I hope that they have some, some sports people there. I know that it would be a lot of fun. Uh, get your tickets at premiersportscardcon.ca. Okay, so we move to the Canadian Football League now, and we got a lot of time for it. We'll open up with Canada's Game of the Week. We do it every Wednesday. And our poll question is brought to you by Key Auto Group. At the Key Auto Group, you can buy with confidence knowing that they provide reports on all vehicles they sell. Get fully informed about your next vehicle by going to keyautogroup.ca. So things have changed a little bit, and it might change your vote. It certainly changed the betting line and uh, the odds for the, the Friday night game, Toronto Argonauts at the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. And I'm, I'm quite interested to get Darren's take. We're not going to play deal or no deal here. We'll do it on Thursday. But what was called a Grey Cup preview, for sure a Grey Cup rematch, has had a lot of water thrown on it because the Argos have said they're not going to play Chad Kelly. They're at least not going to start Chad Kelly, the league's top quarterback at MVP. Um, and therefore, the Blue Bombers are favored by seven and a half at home over the Toronto Argonauts. 
in that game. So my vote, frankly, is going to be Sask and BC. Uh, the Lions are favored by 10 there, Darren. And then on Saturday, it's another doubleheader, Montreal at Ottawa. The Alouettes are favored by two. And Calgary at Hamilton, the Tiger Cats are favored by a point and a half. And, uh, yeah, you can't blame the Argos for doing what's best for their team, but that game sold out at IG Field, and now it's nothing more than practice for Toronto. I know. It is, you know, you said uh, it's a wet blanket. It is. Um, it's supposed to be a heavyweight matchup, a great cup preview, two best teams in the CFL, two best quarterbacks in the CFL. You know, everything is building up to this, and now it means nothing. Um, and I don't hate it. I've seen some people on social media saying the Argos should be starting Chad Kelly. You've got a sold-out crowd. Um, they need to be ready. This is their best tune-up game for, this, for the Grey Cup and for the playoffs. But... I don't think Toronto has much to gain from playing Chad Kelly in this game. If you win, sure, you can gain a little bit of a confidence boost knowing that you can still beat Winnipeg and the best teams in the league, but their confidence is already high. So there's not a lot of room to grow there. I think there's more negatives than positives. You play him and you don't win. Now you got doubt, maybe. Maybe you start you know, questioning if you are that good. I think there's just more negatives than positives to be gained. And this is going to be a physical game. Um, we've heard from Winnipeg, you know, they say, Brady, well, um, Oliveira, you know, they play bully ball. It's going to be physical. So keep your players out of that. You need Chad Kelly in the playoffs. I don't hate this decision from Toronto at all. Well, again, do what's best for you. Uh, that was probably a saying before COVID, but that's when I really learned do what's best for you. End of story. And that's not selfish either, yeah. by the way. Toronto Argonauts are doing what's best for them, and that's not starting Chad Kelly. Kirk is watching on Game Plus TV, writes in and says, Hey, Rod, it's Kirk from Toronto. Fans in Winnipeg are not happy that the Argos are resting Chad Kelly. They want their best. Is it still the game of the week now? No, it's not. Bomber boy in Calgary, writes City says, No Chad Kelly, no game of the week. For Bombers Argos, he says, if you aren't sitting Chad for the rest of the season, this is a bitch move. And I don't know what <laughs> that means, <laughs> per se. I will say this, though. I was watching Pat McAfee yesterday on uh, ESPN. Is that airing in Canada and any one of the million TSN channels, by the way, Pat McAfee? Is it, it is? I th yeah. I, th I think so, but I haven't been able to check every day. Okay. They swear a lot on there. And uh, they had Aaron Rodgers on, by the way, and he was swearing on there. And I was like, wow. I, I think you can get away with the B word, but there's not much more I would want to say than that. Uh, but it is what it is. It's 2023. Rapper J. Cole is breaking NFL news. So, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> say whatever the hell you want. Um, yeah. Do what's best for you. Look at uh, Mike McDaniel. If we can... Yeah sashay this between nfl and cfl number one dallas has written in on my personal phone and says does moose know who the dolphins have played and of course you do he says the dolphins have had a soft, soft schedule it was at the chargers at the patriots home here to denver all those teams are bad um i'm sure you're aware of that when you were putting your power rankings together darren you are football first uh, that's not the Dolphins' fault. You can only play who's on the schedule, and you can only beat who's on the schedule. And the reason I went back to the Dolphins is Mike McDaniel the other night doesn't kick the field goal. He just stops at 70 points scored. Could have kicked a field goal to make it 73 and set an NFL record for points, but he said, I'm about karma. I won't do it. And the reason I bring this all up, Darren, is... Uh, Article I read today, Sean Payton, Denver Broncos, is paying for his off-season words, trashing the last coach in there in Denver last year, Nathaniel Hackett. Payton said that he was the worst coaching job in the history of football in Denver. Now he's 0-3, and they're saying he's paying for it with karma. Do you believe that? Yeah. I mean, I think yeah. there's part of that. Um, I don't know that that's the full reason. Um, coaches got to coach, players got to play. At the end of the day, when you're not winning games, you just don't have the players. 
right? You just don't have the players, especially the way that they're losing. Um, so there's that, but the karma is a big part of it, right? And how you conduct yourself, um, what you put out in the world comes back and look, the chargers aren't a bad football team. They're a good football team. That's kind of struggled a little bit to start, but they're talking about them taking the next step and getting into that Super Bowl conversation. Um, the Patriots always play teams tight, no matter what they've played Philadelphia tight. They played, uh, the dolphins tight. They're always going to be what they're well coached. They're always going to be in games. So I wouldn't look at the schedule and say soft schedule. But again, it is what it is. And the other thing on Chad Kelly, when they're going to the playoffs, they've already secured first place. They need to have a week off before they get to the, the Eastern final. So try this a few times. Give Chad Kelly a week off and see how he plays next week, having the week off. You know, and that's how you can simulate. Um, a CFL's East Division final. And you have a couple of opportunities to do that here down the stretch. So um, if he plays next week, no, they're not hiding him from Winnipeg, but it's a great way to simulate what's going to happen come playoff time. Uh, yeah. Well, by the way, interestingly enough, I wonder how many of our voters are aware that Chad Kelly, Jim Kelly's nephew, if you haven't heard, is not playing for the Argos because... Running away with it as Canada's game of the week is Toronto at Winnipeg Friday night, 56% of the vote. Next is Sask at BC with 29%. Just dabbling into the comments section at my own peril. Robert and Prince Albert says, Pat McAfee goes head-to-head -head with you on TSN 1, LOL. TSN is scared of you, Roddy. They always have been. <laughs> Uh, John in Edmonton says, get over it that Chad Kelly is sitting out. Who really cares? Like, really, is that all you're going to complain about, CFL fans? John, you complain more than anybody about everything. A. B. If you're going to pay a lot of money for tickets, you want to see the best players. I don't blame the fans for being upset at all. Um, <laughs> from B. Henderson in Winnipeg says, uh, the Bombers should use the Bison's kicker and make some history. Talking about the female, Maya Turner. Why the hell not? First female to score points in a pro football game. Why not? Um, Monty in Saskatoon says, it's a business in sports. If there ever was a business, man, it's Monty. Darren, as you know. Oh, yeah. Jordan S. Or Jordan S. writes in and says, how about that? How about that? And uh, I got a... I got to walk it back here because uh, it's getting out of control. I should have never handed it over to the Rod Squad. My bad. It's on me. Nelson, our VP of Sim Events, says this rests on the CFL schedule makers. You have this game as your season opener, and it has a massive pop to it. Yeah, maybe. I don't think the CFL schedule makers think they've done anything wrong at all. I really don't think they do. Um, and, you know, hey, isn't this interesting, by the way? In the summer, TV ratings were up, ticket sales were up, and now I see stories in the media that they're on the decline in the Canadian Football League, which tells me that they should be playing all summer, not in the fall. But again, what the hell do I know? And uh, here's, here's a, you know, and you just never know. I mean, we would have had the Bo Levi's return to Calgary uh, if Hamilton had been on the schedule earlier this season, but he's been hurt for most of it. Now Calgary goes into Hamilton and it's pop. <laughs> How do you know? How do you know? Right? What's the right thing to do? Uh, on the Blue Jays, I just want to throw this in here. Wilf in Steinbach, Manitoba, home of the Pistons, writes in and says, the Blue Jays can't have a marquee hitter swing at pitches when the bases are loaded. Protect the plate. Okay, Wilf, we'll pass that along to John Schneider. Um, hey, for, we do have people from the Blue Jays watching because we got a note from them. They were upset. I was referring to Alex, Alec Manoa as Alex. By the way, where is Alec Manoa? Anybody seen oh, him? Oh, no. Um, Carrie Underwood fallout? What did I... <laughs> I was kind of impressed with myself, my comment yesterday, Moose, where I said, if you're going to crap all over this, can you just wait one day? 
Because yeah. it's a big day for the CFL. You know people are going to complain no matter what. I was at a meeting of my club this morning, and this guy beside me, Gary, he reminds he talks like Joe Rockhead. He's the guy that leans over and goes, you still doing that sports announcing? And I'm like, yeah, on occasion. And uh, today he goes, what's new in the CFL? Because he knows I'm the ambassador of the Canadian Football League in the U.S. of A. And I said, hey, Kerry Underwood announced as a performing a great cap. He goes, better than Usher. Which I guess was announced that? at the same time for the, for the, by the NFL for the Super Bowl. So it's getting thumbs up here. But no, we got a crap on it in Canada just because that's what we do. What's been the fallout in the last little while that you've seen for Kerry Underwood? Last 24 yeah. hours. <clears throat> I've seen a lot of excitement, though, too. And I think that's a good thing. So, you know, we, you'll hear wherever, whatever you pay attention to, right? And I, I think we need to look at the positive side of this. I think it's an extremely exciting. And it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, hopefully, well, I, I can imagine it's sold out. It's going to be a big deal for the CFL. And any time that the league can be in that same breath with stars and with star power, um, it's good. It's good for the league. I, I can't wait. Yeah, well, they're trying to dress it up. I mean, you and I went to Super Bowl, and the list of events and performers there in that Los Angeles Super Bowl were, was dizzying. And I'm like, I don't know what we need this for. Thought we were here for a football game. But uh, people like me don't matter. They're trying to attract uh, the outside sports fans. Anyways, we have to break. We'll kick around more of this next hour because we're very excited to have Jake Ceresna joining us next of the Edmonton Elks in our weekly CFLPA Spotlight. See you, Moose. Brought to you by Sober Carpenter Non-Alcoholic Craft Beers. We'll be back in a moment with Jake, an American defensive lineman for the Edmonton Elks of the CFL. We all know uh, his story. I'm just looking up the Wikipedia to make sure. We'll be back in a moment on the Game Plus Television Network, WQEE Radio, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube Live. squad now you can join the team with your very own rp show gear head to rodpetersonshop.com and get yours today while supplies last it's just like we wear on the show official rp show gear at rodpetersonshop.com Nestled in the scenic Quapel Valley, just 20 minutes northwest of Regina, is one of the finest golf courses in all of Saskatchewan, the Deer Valley Golf Club. The clubhouse has a full-service restaurant, and customers can enjoy a casual dining experience with spectacular views of the golf course and valley. A fully stocked golf shop staffed by PGA of Canada professionals is equipped to meet all of your golf apparel and equipment needs. Book your tee time, family event, or corporate tournament today at the Deer Valley Golf Club. Call 306-731-1445. The sports landscape continues to change, and teams and facilities are under more pressure to provide online and in-venue entertainment. They need the right team to deliver their product. Look no further than IKS Live. We provide service across North America and produce the best fan experience across all platforms. Does this look familiar? Your fans deserve an incredible arena experience. It's time for an upgrade. Stunning graphics. Revenue opportunities are just the beginning with our in-venue display systems and scoring technology. Let us help you find the best solution for your facility. EDG, always delivering the best fan experience. Doing more, more speed, more reps, 
more commitment to getting every detail perfect. And that's why it's important we never miss a donation appointment. Blood and plasma donors are needed every day in Canada to support thousands of patients that rely on Canada's lifeline. We're asking you to join the Hockey Gives Blood Partners for Life team. Join today by downloading the Give Blood app or book online at blood.ca slash HGB. Here's how your business can be a part of Canada's fastest growing sports talk show. All you have to do is contact us and we will tell you all about the dynamic and exciting marketing opportunities we have utilizing a fully integrated 360 degree multi-platform. Imagine your business seen and heard across Canada on Game Plus TV and around the world on the Rod Peterson Digital Network. You will use one of the most overused expressions in sports. You gotta be kidding me. Get your business involved. Contact the Rod Peterson Show today. We back and uh, bad news. You want the good news? You want the bad news? How about just the news? We do not have Jake Ceresna with us at this time. Um, so hopefully we do between now and the top of the hour. Maybe we'll get him next hour. But Jake Ceresna, the Edmonton Elks, they are on a bye week. And that's usually when we're able to scoop up these CFL players, uh, courtesy the Players Association and the Weekly Players Association Spotlight for... Sober Carpenter, non-alcoholic craft beers. And that's, uh, I'm disappointed. You can tell I'm a little forlorn because I was looking forward to chatting with this guy. He's from New Fairfield, Connecticut. Played in the National Football League with the New York Jets and the New York Giants. And in the CFL with the Ottawa Red Blacks, Edmonton Eskimos and the Edmonton Elks. He's an NFL talent. Uh, he's coming off a season where he was all Canadian and a divisional all-star. Jake Ceresna is a stud. And I was all 6'5", 295 with the Afro 6'6". And I was at the game this summer when he did the somersault and took out the referee. And I, quite frankly, really specifically wanted to ask him about that. So if the CFLPA is watching or anybody that knows Jake Ceresna, can you send him a note and tell him we're waiting for him on the RP show? And while we do that... I'm going to read a sports update here for Common Crown Brewery. The Toronto Blue Jays will send Jose Barrios to the mound against the Yankees and their race Garrett Cole tonight at Rogers Center. A 2-0 loss to New York Tuesday night prevented Toronto from inching closer to clinching a playoff spot. They are holding on to the second American League wildcard berth, one and a half games up on Houston and two games ahead of Seattle. Meanwhile, Canada will get a chance to defend its Olympic gold medal in women's soccer next year in Paris. The Canadian team qualified for the 2024 games with a 2-1 victory over Jamaica Tuesday night in Toronto. Chloe Lacasse and Jordan Hytema scored for the home side. Canada won the first leg of the two-game qualifying series 2-0 on Friday in Jamaica. The NHL preseason continues tonight with all seven Canadian teams in action. The Toronto Maple Leafs take on the Buffalo Sabres in a neutral site game in St. Thomas, Ontario. That, I believe, is the Kraft Hockeyville game, right? In other matchups, the Ottawa Senators visit the Montreal Canadiens. The Winnipeg Jets host the Calgary Flames and the Oilers are home to the Vancouver Canucks. Our sports updates are brought to you by Common Crown Brewing Company. They have the perfect craft beer for your enjoyment, featuring their core five, Good Company Hazy Pale Ale, Common Crown Crafted Lager, Journeyman IPA, Brewmaster Blonde Ale, and Coppersmith Brown Ale. Four of them sit below 5% ABV, making them the ideal beer for your everyday common affair. Um, just checking what else we have on the docket in sports today. And I could honestly sit here and go back and forth with you on a lot of things. Um, I'm excited about the day today. We we'll sit and talk about that later on this afternoon. We're going to be taping the Cats and Bolts podcast in downtown Boca Raton, Florida, with a live studio guest, Bill Lindsay, one of the greatest Florida Panthers ever. He's their current radio analyst and scored believed to be the biggest goal in Panthers history. Billy Lindsay's going to be with us this afternoon. So I'm excited about that. But we started that podcast so that we didn't inundate you with Florida Panthers and Tampa Lightning, Tampa Bay Lightning news. Uh, Lightning losing last night, by the way, 5-2 at Carolina. 
this is interesting. It is the CFL time of the year. And believe me, I get that. So let's read some comments. Um, great work, Darren, putting up the meme of the day yesterday was my quote on Carrie Underwood being named to the Grey Cup Festival list of acts this year at Hamilton. Uh, and I said when I saw the news release, I had to check the date. Thought it might have been April Fool's. It's a huge deal. But, uh, just hang on. So I'm going to read a couple of comments. And we're going to take a break and come back with Jake Ceresna. Um, from Yuki Dancer says, absolutely agree. Big deal, but no bigger than Keith Urban a few years ago. I know you're always going to have to complain who's better than the other, but try not to do that. It's big news. Rusty in Saskatoon says, unless the halftime show is Chris Stapleton or Eric Church, what a letdown that announcement will be compared to Carrie Underwood. Just be happy that they got Carrie Underwood. We'll see what happens for Grey Cup Sunday. Jersey Jim, watching in New Jersey, says, she's a huge get. You have no idea. Country royalty. Yeah, we're aware in Canada about country music. We got country music in Canada. We know it's a big deal. Uh, so, we're, hey, a note to our producers in Toronto at Game Plus Television and in Atlanta on WQEE Radio. We're going to take an early break and come back with Jake Ceresna of the Edmonton Elks and the weekly CFLPA Spotlight. So don't move, everybody. We'll be right back on TV and radio, plus Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube Live. The sports landscape continues to change, and teams and facilities are under more pressure to provide online and in-venue entertainment. They need the right team to deliver their product. Look no further than IKS Live. We provide service across North America and produce the best fan experience across all platforms. I'm a First Nation Olympic silver medalist and I'm proud to represent Indigenous hockey players across Canada. Each year, hundreds of Canadians need a stem cell transplant from an unrelated donor to save their life. Anyone can have a hard time finding a stem cell match, but for Indigenous peoples, it can be even more difficult because just over 1% of prospective donors on Canada's stem cell registry are of Indigenous backgrounds. Be a hero. Join me in Hockey Gives Blood in helping to make a life-saving difference to those in need. Register today at blood.ca slash be a hero. Hey, Rod Squad. Now you can join the team with your very own RP Show gear. Head to rodpetersonshop.com and get yours today while supplies last. It's just like we wear on the show. Official RP Show gear at rodpetersonshop.com. Does this look familiar? Your fans deserve an incredible arena experience. It's time for an upgrade. Stunning graphics. Revenue opportunities are just the beginning with our in-venue display systems and scoring technology. Let us help you find the best solution for your facility. EDG, always delivering the best fan experience. We're all capable of doing more. More speed, more reps, more commitment to getting every detail perfect. And that's why it's important we never miss a donation appointment. Blood and plasma donors are needed every day in Canada to support thousands of patients that rely on Canada's lifeline. We're asking you to join the Hockey Gives Blood Partners for Life team. 
Join today by downloading the Give Blood app or book online at blood.ca slash HGB. Business owners and marketers. Okay, we know you think we're pretty cool. That's why we want you to share in the coolness factor. Partner with The Rod Peterson Show and market your business every weekday to sports lovers just like yourself. Take advantage of our many cost-effective commercial and promotional opportunities. Tell the world about your business. Yes, the world. Thanks to Game Plus TV and the Rod Peterson Digital Network. Contact us today and find out how you can be a part of Canada's fastest-growing sports talk show, The Rod Peterson Show. RP Show continues, and hey, collectors all over Alberta, be sure to register for the Premier Sports Card Convention, where collectors, enthusiasts, and sports lovers unite to celebrate the beauty and value of their treasured items. It's in the Red Deer Parkland Pavilion, September 29th to October 1st. Get your tickets and more information at premiersportscardcon.ca. And I'm sure there will be some Edmonton Elks or maybe Edmonton Eskimos gear there, CFL, NHL, NFL for sure. I'm smiling because it is my favorite time of the week. Uh, if we can bring on Jake Ceresna of the Edmonton Elks as uh, we do our weekly CFLPA player spotlight. We're always excited to chat with the players. Jake joins us today on a bye week. Jake, thanks for the time and squeezing us in. What's a bye week mean uh, for a fellow like you? What are you getting up to? Uh, first off, thanks for having me on the show. Um, for me, it's just about relaxing, letting my body kind of get healthy and and all those bumps and bruises heal up and and just you know take some time away from football to just let my mind get refreshed and and that way when I, we come back off the bye week i'll be ready to go well you're getting to a point where in the season where some of these bumps and bruises aren't going to go away <laughs> right i mean it's you guys played <laughs> enough games at this point i mean how much of a how, how much of a benefit is to you like when you get back to work next week are you going to feel 100 percent? do you think or how are you going to feel not 100%, but, you know, I'll feel much better than I did, um, you know, last week. I think we played about seven seven or eight games in a row here. So to just have a week off from football where you're not, you know, pounded every day, especially as a lineman, defensive lineman, where you got to hit every day in practice and in the game, just feels good to have those few days off. Okay, well, this, this is not your typical x's and o's type of interview so i hope you're prepared for that i don't know what the players association told you but being from new fairfield connecticut i've never been to new fairfield connecticut what's that town like what's it famous for um it's famous for its lake candlewood lake uh just a really small town about sixteen thousand people lake town and uh just everyone goes out on the boats you know during the summer and just enjoys themselves have, have a good time really laid back and casual are you the first NFL player to come from New Fairfield, Connecticut? I believe so. I think there might have been another guy that might have got a, you know, a workout or a tryout back in the 80s or 90s, but I think I'm the first guy. Yeah. Cool. Well, certainly something to hang your hat on there. Now, yeah. I was at the game this summer at Commonwealth, and I'm sorry to bring this up, but I have to that you did the somersault and took out the referee. <laughs> uh, number one, have you had gymnastics training in your past that you do that you still do it? Uh, two, you got the flag for it. I didn't know what the penalty was going to be for that. And three, did Jones say anything about it afterwards? <laughs> um, definitely no gymnastics training, as you can kind of see. Um, <laughs> and um, it's actually a funny story. I, I know that referee... You know, he, he refed in the CFL back in, you know, 2017, 2018 when I was, when I was playing. And then we both went um, and took a shot at the NFL together in 19. And then we both came back to the CFL. So um, I have some history of them, and, and I've seen them along the way. And um, I apologized to him a few games ago. I'm like, man, I'm so sorry for, for you know, hitting into you. I, I didn't mean it at all. And he's like, it's okay. You know, the command center said I had to throw the flag because – that's a new rule this year. They don't want any uh, inadvertent touching of the referees, which I understand. Um, luckily, on that play, they still had to punt it because it was—I think it was like third and fourteen or something. It was just a five-yard penalty. Yeah. So I didn't get in too much trouble from Jones. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nobody wants that. I was like, I thought it was hilarious, but I'm like, oh, this is going to be interesting. And, and I don't know if you watched. Did you guys? No, you played Friday night last week because you beat. 
Sask, uh, did you watch Colorado, Oregon? Because Prime had his hands around the ref when he was talking to him, like, you can't touch the ref. But I guess if you're Prime, <laughs> you can do that. Um, Jake, a lot of smiles in Edmonton now with the way the season's turned around. What's the vibe with the Elks? Yeah, I think, you know, since Trey Ford's taken over the starting role, um, I think it's given us some life, you know, starting off 0-9, um, things things weren't looking good, and there was definitely um, some gloom over the organization. But to you know, uh, Trey took over. We got our first win at home in you know two or three years. Got that monkey off our back, and and we got a couple games in a row. I think we're four and two in our last six games. So we've really kind of turned the ship around a little bit, and I think there's just a lot of hope and positivity now around the locker room. Just guys believing, knowing that you know, anytime we take the field, we have a chance to win the game. Well, I mean, I, I talked about your all-star status from last year. I mean, you're a winner. You're a star. And you've been around the game long enough to, to recognize. You look around that locker room and on the field, there's talent there. Like, I watched you guys enough live. I said, this is a good team. What is not happening? Mm -hmm. um, what changed other than not giving up? You said the quarterback. That would be one. Was there anything else? I think just uh, playing more together, too. You know, I think defensively we kind of picked it up. And uh, just making sure we do our assignments and, and making sure we play together as a unit. We, we're not individuals out there just playing for ourselves. That really helped us out a lot, too. Our offensive line has really picked it up, and they're playing really physical as of late, too. So um, just collectively as a team, I think, I think just having Trey in there and, and seeing him scramble around and, and do everything he can to, to make a play for the team just – you know, it, I think it lit a, lit a fire underneath everybody and just made everybody start playing harder. So I think it's been great for us. Well, it, it shows. You guys' enthusiasm shows. And I had a big ovation for the fans that were there when you broke the long home losing streak. And those that's real fans. Man, they should feel proud that they were there the night that it happened. Um, it's just cool to watch what's going on in Edmonton. Back to you personally for a second. What made you want to be a player rep? and the uh, CFL Players Association? Um, I just wanted to, you know, represent the guys and, and kind of be a voice for them and, and uh, help them out anywhere I can. You know, sometimes you see um, some tough situations where guys don't have guidance, and I just wanted to kind of um, be able to, you know, learn more about, you know, the, the business side of things and then also just be able to help more of my teammates out and kind of steer them in the right direction. And I thought the best way of doing that was just becoming a PA rep, you know, uh, learning more, being more informed about how the whole system works, and then just being able to go back to the locker room and uh, share that information with everybody else. Good for you. And we only have a minute, but please tell me quickly what you love about Edmonton. You've been there long enough. What do you like about the City of Champions? Yeah, I always say the people. I think the people there are just so friendly and nice. Um, they're just, when I first uh, got there, they just they just gave me such a warm embrace. And, and just playing for Edmonton, even, even with that losing streak we had, um, the people are just so supportive there. They're always nice. And, you know, we're starting to win some games, and you could just kind of feel um, all the buzz starting to happen around uh, the Elks again. So, uh, yeah, just the people of Edmonton, it, they're just, they're just great people, and <laughs> that's why I love playing for Edmonton, man. I just, I just love playing for them. It shows. Big fan here of what you're doing, Jake, personally and as a team. Thank Thanks you. for the time. Enjoy the rest of the bye. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for having me. Hour two of the RP Show coming up after this brief pause.
capable of doing more. More speed, more reps, more commitment to getting every detail perfect. And that's why it's important we never miss a donation appointment. Blood and plasma donors are needed every day in Canada to support thousands of patients that rely on Canada's lifeline. We're asking you to join the Hockey Gives Blood Partners for Life team. Join today by downloading the Give Blood app or book online at blood.ca slash HGB. The sports landscape continues to change and teams and facilities are under more pressure to provide online and in-venue entertainment. They need the right team to deliver their product. Look no further than IKS Live. We provide service across North America and produce the best fan experience across all platforms. Text 902-518-3033. 902-518-3033. Pick up your phone and text RP, that's Rod Peterson. Hee hee. Text 902-518-3033. Does this look familiar? Your fans deserve an incredible arena experience. It's time for an upgrade. Stunning graphics. Revenue opportunities are just the beginning with our in-venue display systems and scoring technology. Let us help you find the best solution for your facility. EDG, always delivering the best fan experience. Nestled in the scenic Quapel Valley, just 20 minutes northwest of Regina, is one of the finest golf courses in all of Saskatchewan, the Deer Valley Golf Club. The clubhouse has a full-service restaurant, and customers can enjoy a casual dining experience with spectacular views of the golf course and valley. A fully stocked golf shop staffed by PGA of Canada professionals is equipped to meet all of your golf apparel and equipment needs. Book your tee time, family event, or corporate tournament today at the Deer Valley Golf Club. Call 306-731-1445. Business owners and marketers. Okay, we know you think we're pretty cool. That's why we want you to share in the coolness factor. Partner with the Rod Peterson Show and market your business every weekday to sports lovers just like yourself. Take advantage of our many cost-effective commercial and promotional opportunities. Tell the world about your business. Yes, the world. Thanks to Game Plus TV and the Rod Peterson Digital Network. Contact us today and find out how you can be a part of Canada's fastest-growing sports talk show, The Rod Peterson Show. I've had enough of Taylor Swift. Please tell me you have to. As a Chiefs guy, I'm here for it, Rod, but I do have 5% of it. Is just worried that the most, the biggest star on the planet, the most powerful woman in the world, actually has her eyes on the real prize, and that's Patrick Mahomes. And she's infiltrating the Chiefs from the inside through Kelsey. This is the Rod Peterson Show. Yes, it is. Uh, welcome to Hour 2, everybody, of, uh, I think, your favorite daytime sports talk show. Pretty sure we are. Game Plus Television, WQEE Radio. I'm in South Florida, and let's bring in Darren Moose DuPont. Uh, he is in the NHL's Bermuda Triangle. We've got a lot to get to here. Uh, one thing about this show, Darren, if people haven't noticed, it's like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. Uh, maybe we're like, it's the only time that I would be called the snowflake. Uh, there's no two alike. No two episodes are alike here on the RP show. And uh, as we set sail in hour two, um, we got a few interesting things. There's some real interesting people uh, have written into the program that are watching on YouTube chat. I don't know whether to read their comments or not. But hour one was a lot of fun. We had Jake Ceresna with us, the former New York Jet and Patriot, now of the Edmonton Elks. He said, uh, Ted in Red Deer writes in and says, hats off to the CFL Players Association and the RP show for these player interviews with these guys. Just shows what great people play this game. Awesome work, guys and girls. And if I'm not mistaken, it was our sales guy's idea, Kevin the Medium in Calgary. It was his idea to do it, and it's worked out so great, and I'm so glad that we did it. But we've also, listen, we got people writing in here because I asked you, is Pat McAfee on television in Canada? Because it's new to ESPN in the States. And obviously, uh, you said that it is. And it's replayed on ESPN News and it's replayed on ESPN2. 
And uh, so I started watching a little bit of it last night, and I couldn't believe the swearing that was going on. And that's fine. Listen, I'm not a prude. We went over this with spit and chiclets and biz nasty. Say whatever the heck you want. But I don't understand how the business has changed. Listen, we turn this camera off. Nobody swears more than me and Serena. She swear, swears way more than I do. <laughs> Make a trucker blush. But is that where we're at in the business now? Is that, is that where it's going? I, I, don't, I could just never bring myself to be that person and swear on the air. And I'm kind of surprised TSN and ESPN's allowing it on their side with McAfee. But whatever, whatever. Could you do it? I don't know if I could or not. You know, there's the, the thing to be said about being authentically you and people like that. You know, but at the same time, it just feels weird. I mean, I dropped a swear in once. I mean, we, I've had, I've had, you know, mess ups, not mess up, but you know, you've dropped the odd swear word in here, and it's like, oh my god, a big deal. I did it once on a social media video. Um, it was a reaction to something, and I got comments being like, I didn't know that you actually ever swore. It was so jarring to hear you swear. You know, it was so. It made me stop in my tracks. So. I don't know if I could do it. I really don't. It'd be tough. Is that when you got trapped in the stairwell in Toronto and you dropped an F-bomb <laughs> in your story? No, it wasn't. Um, but I could have dropped an F-bomb or two in that one for sure. I mean, I think I did drop one in there uh, worthy of it. But yeah, uh, well, yeah. So I'm glad that this has come up, uh, frankly. And we covered a heck of a lot of sports in hour one. Yeah. We'll get into a little more society and lifestyle here in hour two, if that's okay with everybody. Um, but to recap, if you missed hour one, Blue Jays lost 2 nothing to the Yankees last night. They still have a wild card spot. They got the Yankees tonight. Jose Barrios against Garrett Cole. Uh, NHL leftovers, there were... It's the dang preseason, man. Nobody cares. Everybody just chill, okay? I'm not going to break down these games or even talk what the line combinations are. Stop it! We had a little consternation over what was the... Uh, Top five or six in the NFL power rankings. Moose said Miami. The USA Today says San Francisco. Some viewers are saying, Darren, the Dolphins haven't played anybody yet. And that's just the fun back and forth of sports. So, yeah. We talked about what's Canada's game of the week in the Canadian Football League and running away with the poll. Last I looked for Key Auto Group, it's Toronto at Winnipeg on Friday night. And I kind of wonder how many people are aware that. The Argos have made no secret of the fact their top quarterback, the CFL's MVP, Chad Kelly, isn't going to play. Uh, but whatever. Carlos in Indianapolis writes in and says, expletives are like a spice. In the right amount, it's okay, but too much, and it ruins everything. I kind of, I like, I like talking about this. I like talking about this as a staff amongst each other. Uh, as Darren said, you know, be you. Uh, if the, if the, uh, we were just talking around the coffee table, I'd probably be swearing a lot, but we're not. I'm in front of a microphone and camera on daytime television, so I'm not going to swear. That doesn't bother, and, you know, that doesn't bother Pat McAfee, and that's also cool, too. I'm actually shocked he hasn't s sworn on college game day. You know, yeah. where the sanctity of college football and the NCAA is a lot different than the NFL. But he hasn't done it. The guy, that's why I have no jealousy of the guy. I respect him because he's a true broadcaster. He works his nuts off. He's everywhere, and he does a great job. Hats off. I'm not the kind of guy that's going to get jealous about something like that. So there's the one thing. Um, Jordan writes in, I think he's, he is in Calgary. Jordan asks, he says, Rod, who do you have playing in the Super Bowl in February? I'm going to say right now, Cowboys and Dolphins. Oh, and, that's it. and, and thank you, Jordan, for the question. Because that takes me down a whole other road here. We did cover a lot of CFL at hour one. And if that's what people want to talk about an hour or two, we can or NFL, or NHL. I'm fluent in both of Canada's official languages, hockey and football. But I don't think I could coach, and I'm pretty darn sure I can't be a play-by-play -play guy in today's era of sports with the social media. It would just, it would drive me crazy. And I don't know how the guys and gals that are in the industry, in the way that they are, working for teams do it. I'll give you an example. Did you see the clip from Joe Namath? The 
Jets great. New York Jets great. He came out and on a uh, talk show in New York and said the Jets need to move on from Zach Wilson. And it's the big story. I don't know how much yeah. play it's had in Canada, but I guess they've brought in Trevor Simeon, but they're going to keep going with Zach Wilson until they decide not to keep going with Zach Wilson. They have refused overtures from Carson Wentz, clearly Colin Kaepernick, and there was a third. Matt and Ryan. in yeah, Matt Ryan, thank you, Matty Ice, Darren. So you are following it, and yeah. it's full credit to Robert Sala, the coach of the Jets, to let this kind of roll off his back and say Zach Wilson's our guy until he's not our guy. But Robert Sala is an NFL coach; he's not an NFL quarterback. And Dak Prescott, I felt. Kind of lost his cool a little bit after the Cowboys lost in Arizona on Sunday. I don't know if you saw that quote or interview where he goes, I guess the media got what they want today. And that's the Cowboys losing. I, I, I don't know Dakota Prescott at all. But he's a young man. And young men don't have the strength or mental or experience of the older guys like the coaches. I, I just couldn't deal with it. No, sort of, hey, coach, what do you think about Joe Namath saying that you should get rid of your quarterback? Like I, I'd lose my, I'd lose my mind. You? I know. Well, and that's you know, Bill Belichick has done a really good job of blocking that stuff out. We're talking about the Bengals. We're talking about the Bengals. I'm here to talk about the then Bengals. A, you know, and then they say he's a they jerk. Say, yeah, they say he's a jerk. But you know what? If you answered all those, you're just allowing all that distraction to come in. Joe Namath now is no longer in a football locker room. He is now as much of the media as anybody. You know, he's a contributor in that sense. He has opinions and, you know, articles are written about what he says. People care about what he has to say. That's his job now. But for the football teams, it's not your job to worry about what's being said in the media. We've said this has been the same story for a long time. You know, you're paid to coach and play the game. That's it. Ah, I figured that the audience might like this topic. Uh, a few things. Colin in Ottawa writes in, and he says, great interview with Jake Serez Narati. Thank you, Colin. Jake did spend a year playing with Ottawa. Robin in Prince Albert says, you guys swear? Oh, my God. You just ruined my clean-cut, properly speaking image of you guys. Totally shocked right now. Not too sure what to believe anymore. LOL. <laughs> I just don't swear on the air. Ike. Come visit me on the of golf all course. the times. Yeah, I mean, I have same right. I swear, but just not on the air. I just, I just can't bring myself to do it. Like when we started this show, which was before Pat McAfee, was before Spit and Chicklets, uh, I think, or right around the same time, I had hockey guys say, oh, are you going to drop F-bombs? Are you going to say this? I'm like, I don't think so. That's not me. Not on the air. Um, Nelson, our VP of Sim Events, says... The CRTC and FCC are real strict. You listen to morning radio in Australia. You listen to nighttime radio in the UK. Swearing is viewed differently and gives on-air talent a bit more freedom. Imagine Rod's rant if he could really go off. Hot damn! Uh, I might, <laughs> would probably say things that I wouldn't normally say in the confines of daytime television, but I still wouldn't really swear. I just don't really think that I would. And Jordan in Calgary says, uh, Dolphins offense is unbelievable. Not a fan of Tyreek, but he's a hell of a player. And Jordan also says, Dak is hands down my favorite NFL player. So he was the guy that started the conversation, who's going to be in the Super Bowl? And I said, uh, Cowboys, Dolphins. It's interesting. The <laughs> The one thing I haven't quite got my mind around, but I'm getting there, is how some guys go on the air and just rip the hell out of others, whether it be in the broadcast industry or broadcasters ripping coaches and players. And if I do that, my phone blows up and people are mad. I'm like, how come he can say it and I can't say it? People are mad forever. They want to ruin your career. They don't talk to you anymore. <laughs> I, can't, I don't. <laughs> Can you explain that one to me, Darren? Because I don't get it. Well, you know, I've tried. <laughs> you know, and I think, you know, we don't see it, but their phones are probably blowing up too, right? Or on the flip side, you know, 
were under more of a microscope, you know, being on a network like this and being under in more homes and have more viewers and we're under more of a microscope, you know. Maybe people just don't care. Maybe people aren't listening to some of the other people that are, you know, spouting off. Well, right? I tell you something. Uh, when Craig Button went off on Mike Babcock the other day, number one, I was surprised when he did, but I was like, bravo, Craig. I mean, I've known him since I was 15. Uh, whether I agreed with what he said or not, when he said, good riddance, Mike Babcock, I was like, whoa. And it did not go over well in the hockey community because those people blew up my phone. That's the one thing that I really have a problem with. Grown men... And I'm not talking about those that wrote me, so chill, because they're probably watching or listening right now. But football's worse, believe me. But hockey has it, too. You tell that DuPont. Blah, 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 blah. How about you tell him, bro? You got his number. Yeah, my DMs are open. You know what I, like, yeah, or, or usually it's people that you know. Yeah. You know. Um, by the way, I do want to swing this around for a second. I'm going to read you tonight's game's in the National Hockey League. Sabres, Leafs playing in St. Thomas, Ontario, Kraft Hockeyville game. Florida Panthers are at Carolina. Ottawa's at Montreal. Philadelphia Flyers at the Islanders. Calgary Flames at Winnipeg. I mean, we're all going to be following these games, which is cool. I'm encouraging you to follow them all. I'm just not encouraging you to put much stock in the outcomes of them. The Tampa Bay Lightning are at Nashville. The Vancouver Canucks are at Edmonton. LA Kings at Vegas and San Jose and Anaheim, and in uh, Major League Baseball, we talked about the Yankees at the Blue Jays, and I'm really hoping the Blue Jays do make the playoffs. I don't think it'll be real long, similar to when they got swept by Tampa Bay two years ago, lost to the Mariners last year. I think it's not going to... I don't believe they're going to be world... They're too inconsistent, but they're getting there. Um, I do want to talk about this, because we haven't spent a ton of time and we will as we get closer to the weekend to the, to the football, both NFL, college, and CFL, Darren. But for Canada's game of the week, still running away with it is Toronto at Winnipeg. The fans in Winnipeg are upset that Toronto's not bringing their full lineup because they've already clinched. There's another one. The Bombers just, or the Argos just can't care what other people think of it. Clearly, the commissioner's not going to get involved. He just wouldn't do it. You can't. You need to field... Your best lineup because people sold the... No, they, we, they can't. No. Sask at BC, Montreal at Ottawa, Calgary at Hamilton. My game of the week is Sask at BC, and I was reading a rudimentary amount, not all of them, but a little bit of the game notes for the game. If Hamilton wins and Sask wins, Edmonton's officially eliminated from the playoffs. But they both got to win. And I don't think Sask is going to win at BC. As a matter of fact, the Lions are favored by 10. I don't think Edmonton gets eliminated this weekend. Do you? No, I don't. I really don't. Um, the game in Hamilton's a little intriguing, too, um, because you're right. There's a lot to play for for both those teams. Calgary's got to get this thing going in the right direction, too, but because they're trying to get into a playoff spot. So that those are the two games for me, 1A, 1B, because I think from a Saskatchewan and Calgary perspective, it's a battle, right? It's a battle for one playoff spot. One of those teams is going to get into the playoffs. The other will not. And if you ask me today, pin me down, I can't tell you who I think it's going to be. I don't know. Jeff, the Stamps fan, writes in, says, uh, Stamps at Hamilton is my game of the week. And I'm glad that you brought that up. Because it is yours, and I, of course, your team's playing in it. But our friend Michael in Winnipeg uh, yesterday was not a fan of the Carrie Underwood announcement because he's like, I'm not going to be at Grey Cup. So if she's not performing at the game, but at some concert Friday night, how does that help me or any other Canadian that's not going? And I'm like, can we step outside ourselves for a second and just realize it's a big deal that Carrie Underwood would play the Grey Cup Festival? Can you think about somebody else? Can we just observe? somebody else's opinion or perspective other than our own. Let's spend four minutes and think about that and be back with more in a moment. John Ryan coming up, too, from the Super Bowl champion, Seattle Seahawks. We're live on the Game Plus television network all across Canada and 31 U.S. states, WQEE Radio in Atlanta, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube Live.
The sports landscape continues to change, and teams and facilities are under more pressure to provide online and in-venue entertainment. They need the right team to deliver their product. Look no further than IKS Live. We provide service across North America and produce the best fan experience across all platforms. Pick up your phone and text RP, that's Rod Peterson. <laughs> Two million liters of power creates electricity. Electricity creates. Casino. Nestled in the scenic Quapel Valley, just 20 minutes northwest of Regina, is one of the finest golf courses in all of Saskatchewan, the Deer Valley Golf Club. The clubhouse has a full-service restaurant, and customers can enjoy a casual dining experience with spectacular views of the golf course and valley. A fully stocked golf shop staffed by PGA of Canada professionals is equipped to meet all of your golf apparel and equipment needs. Book your tee time, family event, or corporate tournament today at the Deer Valley Golf Club. Call 306-731-1445. systems and scoring technology let us help you find the best solution for your facility ddg always delivering the best fan experience here's how your business can be a part of canada's fastest growing sports talk show all you have to do is contact us and we will tell you all about the dynamic and exciting marketing opportunities we have utilizing a fully integrated 360 degree multi-platform Imagine your business seen and heard across Canada on Game Plus TV and around the world on the Rod Peterson Digital Network. You will use one of the most overused expressions in sports. You gotta be kidding me. Get your business involved. Contact the Rod Peterson Show today. Hey, collectors, be sure to register for the Premier Sports Card Convention, where collectors, enthusiasts, and sports lovers unite to celebrate the beauty and value of their treasured items. It's in Red Deer, Alberta, at the Parkland Pavilion, September 29th to October 1st. Get your tickets and more information at premiersportscardcon.ca. Selling, buying, browsing, check it out in Red Deer at the end of the month. Well, said so I was excited to have Jake Ceresna on last hour. As excited or more so now, John Ryan joins us, the man with a Hall of Fame resume, Super Bowl champion punter, CFL All-Star, and newly retired. How's retirement life, JR? Uh, it's been busy so far. Uh, I own, uh, own part of three different minor league baseball teams. So uh, up until about a week ago, I was probably more busy uh, in retirement than I was playing football, but it's been a lot of fun. Okay, I got you. Well, I'm glad. A guy like you can't just sit around. But I think the very first question I should have had for you was, how was the 10-year anniversary of the Super Bowl champion Seattle Seahawks? Looks like you guys had a big time there in the Emerald City. Yeah, I mean, first of all, I can't believe it's been 10 years already. But uh, the Seahawks did a great job. They had the entire team back, or as many guys that could make it. Um, it was just great to catch up with the guys again. A lot of those guys I haven't seen in almost 10 years. So it was just great to see them again, catch up, uh, you know, tell, tell old stories, tell, uh, get back into uh, old arguments that uh, probably started a decade ago. It just felt like we were stepping right back in the locker room again. Well, you know what? 
you got some great stories about that particular game. It was in New York, right? It was cold. The one, the Super Bowl that you won. We'll talk about the one that you lost in a second. But you got some great stories, man. Like, I remember you saying, coming out of the, the locker room at halftime, and the announcer said it was the largest score, halftime lead in Super Bowl history. You talk about that day, if you don't mind, and what you remember. Uh, it, it was wild. And really, not only that day, just the two weeks leading up to it is uh, the most uncomfortable two weeks of my life, to be honest. It, it was exciting, and there was a lot going on, but it was just so far outside of your normal comfort zone of what you do to prepare for a football game uh, with all the everything going on. And really the first time I felt comfortable for that entire two weeks was the, the, the day I stepped on the field, you know, right when I stepped on the field for warmups, I was like, oh, I'm, I know what I'm doing now. I, I'm used to this. I'm not used to all the other stuff that happened earlier, but uh, now I'm used to this. And yeah, it was just, man, it was just such a memorable day. Uh, you know, uh, it, it helped the stress levels a little bit, jumping out 22 nothing by halftime and then returning the opening kick in the start of the third quarter, go up 29 nothing. Uh, we we kind of knew there was a, a guy named Peyton Manning on the other side of the field, so no lead was really safe, but uh, we needed 29 points and pretty hard to overcome. And we rode that into a 43-8 you know, to eight win that day. Yeah, life-changing, I'm sure. Uh, and then, of course, I just saw the other day that Pete Carroll finally addressed the call at the end of the game in the ensuing Super Bowl. Talk, talk about the one that you lost, if you don't mind. You probably think about that more than the one that you won. Yeah, I mean, going back, uh, you know, the very next year was uh, obviously it's hard to do. And, you know, we, we did feel a little bit more comfortable that year. And, you know, also not having to worry about the weather playing in, in Arizona, you know, it's a pretty nice place to play. Um, and it was just uh, a, a great football game. It was a really good football game, and uh, I can appreciate that. It was uh, it looked like it was going to go our way right up until, what, about 25 seconds left when, you know, the, the, the famous, uh, you know, second and one pass uh, went uh, didn't go our way whatsoever. So that, that one was painful. Uh, we even talked about that uh, to a lot of the guys that were there uh, this past weekend. Uh, we kind of all – thanked our lucky stars that we won the year before because if we hadn't uh, you know we would have been dwelling on that one for a really long time not that we not that we aren't still but uh, not as bad as it could have been <laughs> what did coach Carroll say about it afterwards like I saw the headline that he spoke about it but did he say that we that we blew it or what did he say about it do you know uh I do know you know and I've been kind of preaching this for a long time with just you know basic four minute offense you want to make sure every down is available to you so second or third down was going to be a pass that's just the the way it goes with the amount of time out's been left and the position on the field it was uh i don't agree with the where where we threw the ball i don't think you should keep it in the middle of the field i think we should have you know threw a a, a fade route or something like that uh but it, it was it was a passing down i mean people don't understand that but that's just part of the, the basics of a four minute offense you have to make sure every down is available to you and i think i, I don't know exactly what pete said i'm sure it's something similar to that that he, he came out and said, uh, because that's like that's how we looked at it in the locker room. We we weren't happy about it, but we understood that, that was a passing down. I don't know if I ever asked you this, but you talk about the two week lead up to Super Bowl. Were you at least able to spend a night or two in your own bed in Arizona at that Super Bowl, or did you stay in the team hotel the whole time? I was. We uh, when we got in on uh, I believe it was Sunday. The Monday was going to be our day off, and then our, our media day later on in the day. So I was able to, you know, spend one night, one night in my own bed before I had to go to the uh, the team facility. So uh, that was nice just to get away from all the uh, all the commotion of everything and just kind of feel normal for for one night. Yeah, I don't doubt it at all. And you know, we did used to sit back and talk about you ending your career in the CFL. I never actually thought it would happen, but it did. You weren't able to add a Grey Cup to the trophy case, but you did kind of accomplish what you wanted. How are, and we haven't talked about this. How are you with the footnote, the post post NFL part of your resume? I'm uh, very happy with it. You know, uh, I've always kind of done things on my own terms and did things the way I want to do it. So I know a lot of people said that it was kind of uh, maybe a little bit ridiculous that I go back in the CFL and you know play for peanuts for for three or four years. But I didn't see it that way at all. Uh, I got to play in my my hometown. I got to play in Regina. Uh, a kid that grew up there, you know, season ticket holder since 1990 until the day I was drafted in 2004. Uh, it was kind of always a dream to go back there and, uh, you know, play for the Rough Riders. And uh, I had uh, Bob Poley, the polecat who you're familiar with, former Rough Rider. He told me when I was about 23 years old, he said, John, play as long as you possibly can and then play one more year. Uh, and that's what I did. And that's why I went back and played that one last year at Edmonton. 
uh, we, we didn't have a great record, but I had an absolutely phenomenal time and I went out uh, exactly how I wanted to. So uh, no regrets and I'm, I'm pretty happy with the, the post post career, how it went. Good, funny you say that though, because Poli's last year was with Don Matthews was the head coach and Poli didn't have to even practice. Man, maybe he told you that. It was like, show up and snap the ball. Did you have that deal in Edmonton? Did Jones make you practice the last year? Oh, hell yeah, he did. Yes, he did. Uh, but it was funny because I had that conversation <laughs> with Poli. I was back in a Ryder game in the Alumni Lounge. <clears throat> Sorry. And uh, he was telling me that he had a pretty good year that year. His job was to go get pizza for the boys on Fridays, I think, and uh, just pretty much show up for games and hang out with the boys and have beers and uh, eat pizza. So it sounded a little bit more fun than my last year, but I also had a lot of fun. <laughs> different era, different era. I think <laughs> yeah, they might have okay. still been smoking in the in the locker room back then. So aside from owning those three teams, what else are you doing? Uh, just back here in LA as much as I can be, uh, you know, and I was, you know, for the last decade with, uh, my wife, Sarah, we, we didn't get to spend a whole lot of time together, uh, all the time, you know, it was more of an off season thing and a weekend here and there during the season. So, uh, now we have to spend a lot more time together and it's been, uh, it's been really, it's been really great. Uh, I like to see that. I mean, we got to get her on again. Because as you know, Absolutely. Um, you're funny, but she makes a living out of it. And uh, what, what was her take of the uh, Seahawks reunion? Because you guys just started dating like that week, did you not, of that Seahawks Super Bowl? Her, her and I literally started date, or started talking the week of that Super Bowl. Uh, and yeah. I told her I'd love to take her on a date, but I was a little busy because I had to play in the Super Bowl on Sunday, which is uh, you know a great line that not many people can use. So How about I thought I could that? use it, so I used it. And then... Uh, you know, she, she had a lot of friends reunion, too. She caught up with a lot of people. Uh, we have a lot of friends there that are, are not football-related people. We have, to, we have to catch up with them. And just, uh, just a great time getting back to that city. Well, let me just ask you this, and this is not as much interview as it just you and me rapping, but you heard me talk about that sports card convention. They don't, in Red Deer, they don't do it in Canada like they do it in the States. You know that. But would you be, you know, like hitting those things seems a lot of fun. A lot of athletes do. Would you would you be up for doing stuff like that? Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. You know, I've been doing a, a few things here or there. Uh, uh, kind of nice. I know. I know some of my former teammates have to do that stuff, and uh, uh, I, I get to do that stuff. So it's, it's a bit different position for some guys. But uh, I always like getting back out with the fans. You know, uh, it seems actually easier to be with the fans now that you're away from the game than actually when you're in it. So you don't have to ask questions about what you did last weekend. You get to talk about the glory days from years years behind you which is a, a lot more fun so yeah i'm definitely up for any of that okay cool well and, and the last thing i don't know when i'm going to see you again other than maybe this interview but uh or the, like an interview down the line but the viewers don't know you have roughly nieces and nephews a million like they thought That's it was somewhere, cool somewhere there to go <laughs> yeah to go down and watch uncle john and not have to get on a plane to go watch Uncle John, to just drive down Elphinstone Street and go watch all those nine Ryan jerseys. That had to be cool, man. What was that like? That, that was really a huge part of why I wanted to do it. You know, I have 12 nieces and nephews by, from my three siblings, and uh, a lot of them had never seen me play in person before. Uh, a few of them had come to Seattle for, you know, a game a year. Even in my brothers and sisters, my mom, too. You know, they'd all kind of come for a game or two a year. And uh, when I was playing in Regina, they got to see me every week, you know, to look up and see, you know, 12, 12 of my nieces and nephews uh, all in number nine jerseys. Uh, it's pretty special, and it was uh, definitely one of the reasons why I came back. Yeah, I thought it, I just watched it from afar, and I'm like, this is just so awesome. And I guess lastly, what is up on the entertainment front of your lovely wife, Sarah Colonna? Uh, I love the Shameless show. Or, uh, so what was the name of her, the show? Salacious? What was it? Insatiable on Netflix. Right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it got weird near the end. They all do. Um, what's up on her career docket right now? Well, it's uh, the street, the Screen Actors Guild and the uh, and the actors have been on strike for a number of months now, and I think the uh, Screen Actors Guild is just uh, getting back to work now. So uh, she hasn't had a lot other than you know her podcast, um, Are You My Podcast, and she's still touring. She's in Tacoma in a couple of weeks here. So uh, she's sticking, staying busy with that, but uh, now the, the, the acting and the writing will come back right away too, so she's looking forward to that.
Good stuff. Well, enjoy uh, what's rest of the what's left of the break, John. Appreciate the time here today. Please give her my best, your whole family, and uh, enjoy retirement, sir. Thanks, Rod. Good to see you. Good to see you. Super Bowl champion, CFL All Star John Ryan checking in from Los Angeles, California. I'm not sure if we're going to have Moose again on the program, but uh, when we come back, we'll do a sports update and audience takeover. They're telling me Moose will be back for the rest of the show. So uh, join us on the most interactive program on television and radio. We're live on Game Plus TV, WQEE Radio, Apple Podcasts. Spotify and YouTube Live. Did you know that you can help save a life? And you can start right now. Stem cells from male donors increase chances of positive outcomes for patients, yet they only make up 40% of our registry. Today, there are hundreds of people in Canada searching for their life-saving match. You can be a patient's best hope. Be a hero by registering with Canadian Blood Services Stem Cell Registry now. Does this look familiar? Your fans deserve an incredible arena experience. It's time for an upgrade. Stunning graphics. Revenue opportunities are just the beginning with our in-venue display systems and scoring technology. Let us help you find the best solution for your facility. BDG, always delivering the best fan experience. I'm Bridget Laquette. I'm a First Nation Olympic silver medalist, and I'm proud to represent Indigenous hockey players across Canada. Each year, hundreds of Canadians need a stem cell transplant from an unrelated donor to save their life. Anyone can have a hard time finding a stem cell match, but for Indigenous peoples, it can be even more difficult because just over 1% of prospective donors on Canada's stem cell registry are of Indigenous backgrounds. Be a hero. Join me in Hockey Gives Blood in helping to make a life-saving difference to those in need. Register today at blood.ca slash be a hero. My name is Logan Stanko. And I'm Connor Bedard. We're both Hockey Gives Blood player ambassadors and proud to be blood donors. There are thousands of patients each year in Canada that rely on a generous stranger to save their life. Please book an appointment today to donate blood at blood.ca slash HGB. owners and marketers okay we know you think we're pretty cool that's why we want you to share in the coolness factor partner with the rod peterson show and market your business every weekday to sports lovers just like yourself take advantage of our many cost-effective commercial and promotional opportunities tell the world about your business yes the world thanks to game plus tv and the rod peterson digital network contact us today and find out how you can be a part of canada's fastest growing sports talk show the rod peterson show Hey, everybody, it's me, the champ. We're live on Game Plus TV and Key Radio in Atlanta. And just ahead of bringing the moose back on, here's your sports update on this Wednesday. The Toronto Blue Jays look to get back on track as uh, Jose Barrios takes the mound tonight against the Yankees' Garrett Cole. 
at Rogers Center. Jays lost 2-0 on Tuesday, Tuesday night, preventing them from inching closer to a playoff berth, but they are still one and a half games up on Houston for the American League's second wildcard spot. All seven Canadian teams are on action tonight in NHL preseason play, including the Leafs against Buffalo in Kraft Hockeyville. And uh, remind me, Darren, to talk about this. I just did a quick search of social media in the break. My bad. And they said, I just saw the NHL's considering, and they've brought them on. The NHL considering playing outdoor games in Mexico. So hang on. And from the curling world, top Canadian curlers, Kerry Anerson and Brad Gushu are in Oakville, Ontario, at the Points Bet Invitational, which gets underway today. The first season of Champions event of the season has 16 teams featuring many of Canada's top men's and women's rinks and runs through Sunday. Anderson opens against Josie Zimmerman in the afternoon. Gushu meets Greg Balsden in the first afternoon draw. Sports update is for Common Crown Brewing Company. They have the perfect craft beer for your enjoyment. Featuring their Core 5, Good Company, Hazy Pale Ale, Common Crown Crofted Lager, Journeyman IPA, Brewmaster Blonde Ale, and Coppersmith Brown Ale, four of which sit below 5% ABV, making them the ideal beer for your everyday common affair. Folks, you got 21 minutes to get a comment to us on the text line 902-518-3033. It's brought to you by EMJ Marketing. Look up Joe at emjmarketing.com. They'll provide the perfect keynote speaker for your event. Um, I, I don't know, man, uh, where you are, how much time you spend surfing social media. I think you spend a lot of it. A lot of us do. Yeah, we're in the business. But you really got to be aware of the fake news. I say that a lot of times. Uh, this is the first I saw it, and it, I can't remember the name of the website. Do you believe this story, by the way, Darren, that the NHL is considering outdoor games in Mexico? Yeah, of course. I believe it. Um, I don't know if it's true or not, but it's very believable. They're playing in Australia. Not outdoors, but they're playing in Australia. And it makes me kind of think, like, did anybody consult the ice maker before making this decision? Like, is he sitting there watching our show right now being like, wait a second, you want to do what? And, and do it where? Like, they were worried about the glare. Remember when the Colorado Avalanche played in the outdoor game? Was that on Lake Superior, Lake Erie? I can't remember. Um, and they were worried about the glare off the ice. You know, it was causing problems. Too much sun. Well, what do you think it's going to be like in Mexico? <laughs> you know, it's, you got to battle a lot of elements. About, but <clears throat> when they were at Lake Tahoe? Tahoe, that's that it. Thank you very much. Yes. Yeah. Um, Lake Tahoe. But you know what? They'll find a way to do it. And if you can do it and expose the game to more people, why not? I think it's great. I'm sure they're loving this in Australia even though I haven't seen a lot of coverage from the games. Hmm. Kirk in Toronto writes in. Uh, he's watching on Game Plus. He says, hi, Rod. No matter who they put up against you in your time slot, the RP show is number one for me. How about that? Thank you, Kirk. <clears throat> and he also, where is it here? Uh, Kirk says, yes, Pat McAfee is on TSN. And yes, it's a swearing fest with Aaron Rodgers. That's the thing. Um, I sit here and think in 2023, having been around football a long time, hockey my whole life, Pat McAfee just resembles what football is. Aggressive, in your face. That's him. That's football. You know what I mean? And uh, that's kind of what a lot of people want, but I also know it's what a lot of people don't want. But there's room for everybody out there. Back on yeah. point, I mean, with the no neutral site stuff, I became a lacrosse fan because I was invited by the Saskatchewan Rush, their president at the time, to come up and, and take in a game. Otherwise, I would have probably not gone to a game. NLL, National Lacrosse League. I went and I was hooked immediately. Ended up buying season tickets. It's the whole part of sampling your product. I mean... I don't know. There's soccer friendlies, as they say, in neutral site games. Um, I went to Canadian Premier League games. I went to them in Calgary, and they were fun. I didn't really know what was going on. But I guess the, the, that's the whole point of marketing and exposure. You can't say the NHL isn't doing a good job 
getting out in front of people in new places. You know, maybe somebody in Australia loved what they saw, and somebody in Mexico will love what they see, and they'll become a hockey fan out of it. There's, that, that, there's really nothing to lose by doing that, I guess is my point. Yeah, there's nothing to lose. I mean, fans in their local markets, even Canada, where it's really big, um, they don't they don't go gaga goo goo over preseason games. Like the <laughs> the, the the attendance isn't busting at the seams. They're not selling out preseason games. So why not move those to neutral sites? Why not move those to other markets and expose more people to the game who aren't going to drive or travel or fly? to watch in the regular season. I think it's great. Um, there, like you said, there's nothing to lose. From uh, the audience, and thank you guys for chiming in. You can do so on the streaming as well, those watching on YouTube. Nelson uh, says they have, been, they have played outdoor games in L.A. The NHL has proven to themselves they can make ice anywhere with their mobile ice plants. Ryan in upstate New York says there was a wicked glare in the 2014 Stadium Series game in Yankee Stadium between the Devils and Rangers. Same thing happened in Winnipeg. They had to delay the game there. In Tahoe, it was, wasn't a glare per se. I think it was just bad ice, right? And Dan, watching in Saskatoon, says, I've been told by NHL people that the best ice in the league is in Dallas. Heat isn't the issue. Humidity usually is yes but i'm probably oversimplifying things but have we thought about turning the temperature down i was in the game the other night here in sunrise and i was riding down in the elevator between the doubleheader games with one of the panthers staff and i said i'm sorry but did you guys drop the temperature by 20 degrees in the offseason, she's like, I don't know, but I'm wearing gloves next game. And I'm like, I don't know either, but my lips are blue. <laughs> like, I used to think Arizona was cold, and it was. Uh, I'm going to tell you what's now a Merritt Bank Arena in Sunrise, Florida, is unbearably cold. And this coming from a guy. And that, and, 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 getting to a point here. In the 90s, who, and even the 80s, who doesn't remember Boston Garden? You wouldn't, but the players skating around with towels because of the fog on the ice, trying to get the fog lifted so they could play because it was hot in the summertime in Boston and the Stanley Cup final. And then the same thing happens in Dallas. So what do they end up doing? Putting these huge air conditioning contraptions. You saw those tubes on the end of the building, and now they don't have these weird contraptions, but the buildings are colder. Duh. Did we have to bring in a specialist to figure this out? And I do remember in the 80s, uh, the Agrodome in Regina, where I went as a kid to watch the Pats games, we loved the fact that you could sit in your chair and take your coat off and not be too cold to watch the game. Problem was, we had the worst ice in the league. Habitually. So now they've cranked the temperature way down, and the ice is great. It's a miracle. <laughs> but I'm sitting here going, I wonder, I don't know what I'm going to wear Friday night. I don't even have a parka. I came home and told Serena, I don't even have a parka. I don't know what I would wear. And I remember when this change happened. 10 to 15 years ago, you've heard me tell the story. We had a Zamboni driver at the brand center, Phil. He was a grumpy old bastard. And we love that about each other. Because now I'm grumpy too. I, I get it. Hard <laughs> exterior. He's just tired of people's crap. So that was when they cranked the temperature down in the arena. And I remember, do you remember me telling this story? I walked around yeah. underneath. Phil just comes off the ice in the Zamboni. I'm like, hey, would you mind turning the temperature up for God's sakes? It's freezing in here. And you, this is the guy running the Zamboni. Remember what he said? It's a hockey rink, not a shopping mall. Okay. <laughs> and then I was, that's the language I understand. Like I said yeah. to you on the phone when the guy with my Jeep over here, he's like, did you leave it uncovered in the flash flood the other night? Yes. It's not a submarine, it's a Jeep. 
Oh, okay. Sometimes you need to get in somebody's face and yell at them <laughs> to wake them up. So do you think it's as simple as turning the building temperature down is my I long mean, preamble here. Who would have thought, right? The colder the temperature, the better the ice. I mean, right? I mean, one-on-one -on -one makes two. Um, but that was always a thing as a kid, too, being in winter. We'd, oh, we'd play in some cold rinks. Quill Lake, Saskatchewan, cold. Uh, Seaman, Saskatchewan, probably the, the coldest rink where there's frost on the inside, on the boards, right, on the, on the ceiling. It was covered in snow um, and, and starting to freeze on the inside. Rutherford Rink in Saskatoon was colder inside than outside in the middle of the winter. Um, but we always, it was always a treat to go to Humboldt and play, go to Yorkton and play a game in the bigger arenas. Um, if we ever got to go to Saskatoon or Regina to watch a, a junior game or go to an event, that was a treat. It's like, I want to play in a rink where it's warm and I don't have to wear a turtleneck yeah. and four long sleeves under my hockey gear. Right? And, and, and warmers in my shoes. Like, that was the dream. And you thought that was awesome. But now they're kind of going away from that. And they're turning the temperature down in these bigger rinks. And paid millions of dollars to somebody to figure that out, that you want to yeah. drop the temperature. But I would ask, okay, we're going to break and come back for overtime. But I would ask the audience, fill in the blank. I played in a rink that was so cold that... Blank. Because yeah. I want to say it was Fillmore. I think it was Fillmore, one of those little towns. The puck hit the post and split in two. It was so cold that the puck split in two when it hit the post. Fill in the blanks, people. And we'll be right back okay. with overtime for Overtime Hockey Lanes in a moment. We are live on the Game Plus Television Network, WQE Radio, Podcast, and YouTube Live. The sports landscape continues to change and teams and facilities are under more pressure to provide online and in-venue entertainment. They need the right team to deliver their product. Look no further than IKS Live. We provide service across North America and produce the best fan experience across all platforms. Hey, Rod Squad, now you can join the team with your very own RP Show gear. Head to rodpetersonshop.com and get yours today while supplies last. It's just like we wear on the show, official RP Show gear at rodpetersonshop.com. Hi, my name is Logan Stankoven. And I'm Connor Bedard. We're both Hockey Gives Blood player ambassadors and proud to be blood donors. There are thousands of patients each year in Canada that rely on a generous stranger to save their life. Please book an appointment today to donate blood at blood.ca slash HGB. Does this look familiar? Your fans deserve an incredible arena experience. It's time for an upgrade. Stunning graphics. Revenue opportunities are just the beginning with our in-venue display systems and scoring technology. Let us help you find the best solution for your facility. DDG, always delivering the best fan experience.
Here's how your business can be a part of Canada's fastest growing sports talk show. All you have to do is contact us and we will tell you all about the dynamic and exciting marketing opportunities we have utilizing a fully integrated 360 degree multi-platform. Imagine your business seen and heard across Canada on Game Plus TV and around the world on the Rod Peterson Digital Network. You will use one of the most overused expressions in sports. You gotta be kidding me. Get your business involved. Contact the Rod Peterson Show today. It's overtime, and it's brought to you by Overtime Hockey Lanes in Calgary, 28th Street Northeast. They've got all kinds of promotions running now. Foosky's ready to rock, their version of foosball, but they call it a foos hockey. Just go check it out. 28th Street Northeast in Calgary, where skill and fun collide. I call it an amusement park for hockey players, now even more so. Moose DuPont is with me for overtime, and there are quite a few things that we can get into here regarding that puck splitting. When it hit the post, it was so cold in the rink. Uh, Jen at the Four Seasons writes in, and she says, that happened in Regina a few years back. Happened two times in one game. Bad batch of pucks, I guess. LOL. Uh, from Jackie says, I remember I watched one of my cousins play hockey in a rink that was so cold, someone's hot coffee ended up freezing solid. Oh, Do you believe it, Dale? No. Uh, Darren? I believe it. I really believe it. And the one I had for how cold it was, it was so cold in these rinks that the hockey players couldn't wear the half shield because they would just fog up or frost up. They had to wear a half cage. Remember those half cages that the small town rinks yep. would wear? That's how cold it was. And Nelson says, I played in a rink in Vibank. It was so cold that I body checked a kid and snot was instantly frozen to his cage for the rest of the game. Uh, so, yeah. And Wayne in Victoria, B.C. says, I can understand having air conditioning in the buildings, but why do they need to have it below freezing? Well, look. I am no expert, and I've wandered to the end of my leash on this topic. Other, <laughs> What's so funny? I'm what? just waiting for what you're going to say. Why does it have to be below freezing? Because that's when ice freezes. D does it not stand to reason? <laughs> <laughs> that the colder it would be, the better the ice would be. Hot take. Give me all the millions they spent on this study that they needed to drop yeah. the temperature in NHL arenas to make the ice better. Um, in other news, breaking news. Oh, my God. It is only Wednesday, right? We got to get to the weekend. This from the Atlanta Black Star. Did you read this, Ryan, on radio? Travis Kelsey's ex, Maya Benberry. This is the headline. Travis Kelsey's ex, Maya Benberry, warns Taylor Swift to stay away from the cheating NFL star, alleges he cheated on her with Kayla Nicole. Okay, I'm forget about the swearing on Pat McAfee and Spittin' Chicklets. Is this where we're at now? Is this what's passing for sports talk and news? I understand this is at yahoo.ca is where I saw it, but like we're really, we're really hurtling down a hellhole fast if this is what <laughs> the headlines are now. What do you think? Yeah, I know. I mean, but it's the story of the day, and anything that has Travis Kelsey or Taylor Swift in it is going to get you clicks and sell you more advertising and make you more money. I mean, from Viz's perspective, we should be doing the two-hour Travis Kelsey, uh, Taylor Swift show. But, you know, yeah. Um, yeah, it's a, it's, it's, I don't like it and uh, I wouldn't rate it. Well, of more interest, which we'll be spending more time as we work towards Friday night, is uh, the Toronto Argonauts. I'm seeing, uh, is we going to talk some actual pro ball here? The Toronto Argonauts are getting raked over the coals for not bringing their full lineup. And I don't know what to say, man, other than, there's Hall of Fame Winnipeg media ripping the Argos for this. And it's like, come on, guys. If it was your team, which you've been in those shoes, resting your guys and you didn't have a problem with it, but now Toronto's doing it and you're ripping? Come on. 
I don't get it. Whose side are you the on? The only thing Darren? I saw, I know. The only thing I saw with this, Dave Naylor did make a point. He said, "This is one example of maybe why unified standings could come into play." To make the games more meaningful down the stretch. The NLL just went to unified standings. No more East and West. Yeah. So because one team clinched in record time, we're going to change the standings. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you tomorrow, man. Noon Eastern. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. See you then. McFly, hello?